Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, I am going to plant two princesses. What do you think about that? And the two princesses that I am going to plant is called Pocahontas and Cinderella. And Pocahontas and Cinderella is a Japanese anemone, which is actually from, I thought this was very interesting, it's native to China, but been cultivated in Japan for many years. So I have two different varieties, but they look, and they're gonna pair off really well with each other. Here's the plant tags. There is Cinderella, and there is Pocahontas. You can see that in the sun there. So it's got a great big gorgeous butterfly right there, so I'm assuming that butterflies love this plant so I'm really excited about that because who doesn't love more butterflies in your garden but it does make a good cut flower garden is what this plant tag says it is zones from 5 to 8 so I'm a zone 8 which means that I'm on the cusp of it may be maybe too hot for here in the summertime so it says it takes full sun but in this area right here that I'm going to plant it in it is going to get just a little bit of shade from my emerald green arborvitaes so we'll just have to like see how it does in my garden it's just like trial and error sometimes and this is a beautiful compact gem it's a must see for yourself they say it produces double pink blooms from July to September that are on a sturdy stem and it says that it's great for containers. And it does, it says it can, may benefit from winter mulch, which it doesn't get that cold here, but I still have mulch in my garden anyways. So I'm gonna give it that. And then when I read up on this plant, just a little bit, it says that it likes rich, moist, but well-draining soil. So I have drip in this flower bed because we have such hot summers and I am like an advocate of here in the south if you want gorgeous flowers all year round that you must put a drip in and i've got videos about that that tells you how to put drip in but pocahontas is the double flower and cinderella is more of a single flower but i think they look really well together and when i look these up they come in all different colors lots of pinks and lots of whites but cinderella is also just the exact same thing. It's a thick petaled baby pink blooms from July to September on a sturdy stem. And it also says it's great for containers. It blooms early summer to fall. And the sizing on this, it gets 12 to 18 inches tall and it says to space it about 18 inches apart. So that's probably what I'm gonna do is space it close to 18 inches apart. And again, zone five to eight. This is the very first time I've ever seen on a plant tag that says heat zone. Look at that. You guys see that? Like right there underneath my finger. It has a heat zone. I just talked about one of that in one of my videos and I do need to look and see exactly what heat zone that I am. And it says heat zone eight to one. So we're gonna get these planted. It is starting to turn cool here in Charlotte. So we're gonna get these planted in the ground. It's starting to turn cool here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I have three plants that I want to plant in the ground today and just get it done. Besides getting my spring flower bulbs in the ground, which I need to do that soon, but I think I'm gonna wait on like a really good weekend to do that and just kind of get it over with. My, health, my husband is a really great help. He will just help me dig the holes and I can pl plop the bulbs in and cover them up and we can get it done twice as fast. And I do have lots of bulbs to uh, plant for spring, for a good spring show. And my Sasha here is sitting right here next to me. Can you say hi? Oh, yeah. Look. Every time I tell her to say hi, she goes and looks for somebody. Come here. Sasha. Come here. Come here and say hi. Come here and sit beside Sasha. Oh, I shouldn't have disturbed her. But let's get these Japanese anemones in the ground 
and I'm going to show you how to do that and then we're going to talk about the next plant that I absolutely need to get into the ground to before it turns too cool and I'm not able to plant. Guys know I love my power planter. This is the Easy Dig Kit, and this is going to make an awesome gift for anybody that you know that loves to garden. So great Christmas present. I wish I had mine a lot earlier. So just so I remember, Pocahontas, no, 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 Cinderella is the closest to my duck. My goose, my goose, you want to call her, easier. Nice healthy roots. like the foliage on this plant too and I didn't show you guys that but I'll show you here in a second when I turn the camera around and I do have my drip system around here somewhere so I need to really be careful I don't dig into that I'm not sure if it's coming more over this way I think it is so I have a pot here too. I'm on the very edge of my emerald green arborvitaes. that gorgeous foliage on these. This is part of the ranocula family also when I was looking it up. And there was another one. I'm thinking uh, the Christmas flower, the Linton rose. That's part of the ranocula family also. I've got a lot of nice, healthy looking mulch that's already turned to compost here. Just so I can remember, I am going to throw this tag right in here next to Cinderella. And then when I get me some nice, pretty plant tags, I can change it out. And this is Pocahontas right here. tell this is my hydrangea garden my emerald green arborvitaes and I have still some sp spent bloom from my limelight this is the next plant that I'm going to talk about and there's my miss goose and then of course Cinderella 
and Pocahontas. There's my pretty girl over there keeping a watch out. So the next plant that I'm going to talk about is the yarrow and this is the very last perennial that I'm going to plant this year. I believe, I hope I can make that promise to myself, but the only thing I have to plant is a couple of spring flowering bulbs and some violas. But this one is called Firefly Sunshine and it is a perennial and it's a yarrow. Look how gorgeous that is. Does that not look like sunshine? And I absolutely love yellow in my garden. It's one of my favorite colors. Yellow, pinks, just those real soft colors. And this is a Proven Winners plant. And let me show you the foliage on that. So I really like the foliage. When you're picking out a perennial, make sure you like your foliage as well because that's what you're going to look at most of the season because perennials only bloom like part of the season. They're not going to give you like months and months of interest as like annuals will. So if you want lots of color all the way through your season, you need to plant your, your annuals as well. But this is part of the Aster family and it is zones three to eight, which I am a zone eight as I've already told you. It blooms early to late summer and it takes full sun. And I always like to read the features on here for you guys because I always look, I can't repeat the saying of what the features say on this. One of the very best yarrows for lasting color throughout the summer. Bright yellow flowers contrast with dark gray green foliage. Upright habit. It says it's easy to grow in full sun and well drained soil, which I have here in the cottage garden. Avoid planting in rich soil don't have to worry about that so maybe I won't throw some of my compost in with this one I'll just do my biotone once flowers have faded cut plant back by half and then usually when you can cut back your flowers after they've already bloomed a lot of times they're not going to give you that great flush like they did the first time but you might sporadically get some really nice flowers or blooms after the fact so it says pair with coneflower, daylily, catmint, which I have, I have coneflower, I have daylilies, and I definitely have catmint. Phlox I have, I do not have speedwell, Veronica, I've tried that and it didn't work out well. It may have just been where I planted it, I may give it another try. And then chasta daisies, which I have as well, but that one is the end of my, oh, I drained your garden. So I looked this plant up. Guys, you can always find some interesting stuff on this, like very interesting facts. So yarrow was used to use, I had so much that I couldn't even remember it by heart. It's a European folk medicine. It has flavonoids in it, and it can increase salvia and stomach acid to help improve digestion, relaxes smooth muscle and intestines, uterus, and menstrual cramps. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to just come and taste a leaf or two <laughs> when you have some menstrual cramps. But one thing I said that said could be poisonous and then another thing said no that it was not, not poisonous. But it's definitely deer resistant because of its bitter taste and it's often called poor man's pepper because of the bitter taste that it gives. And it has lots and lots of names and one of the kind of came to me that means more to me was soldier's wound wart because I have a soldier and it's also called it was used in spells and it's often called called devil's nettle what you think about all that and it does attract bees and butterflies but I just loved this bright yellow flower and I liked this gorgeous foliage that it gave me. So we're going to get this planted in the ground and I'm going to show you how and I'm so excited that this is my last plant for the year.
So I'm on the other side of my cottage garden next to my neighbor's house. And then I planted this right next to a daylily. And there is the gorgeous foliage from that yarrow, my daylilies, and then I have it right next to a serendipity. And if you've never planted serendipity, which is part of the onion family, it's gorgeous as well. Love this plant. Wish I could have all of these up close on the other side of the garden where I can see them well. And look at this Baptisia. So this Baptisia is also known as Rattlers, a Rattler toy. Can you guys hear that? Used to, they used to give these to kids as a toy because they rattled. I'm sure if you did. Isn't that cool? But if you cut it too early, you wouldn't have got these seed pods, but they have little teeny tiny seeds in these pods. Can you see the seeds there? Cool, huh? So I definitely need to get that all planted back because it's just gone from the weather. Okay, guys, the only thing that you did not see me do is water these plants in. It's going to rain tomorrow. I believe we're supposed to get another half an inch, but I am going to give it just a little bit of water because when I dug in there, it was dry, which I cannot believe because that hurricane came through and gave us great two inches of rain, but that just tells you how well that this area drains. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, the yarrow and the Japanese anemone and our Miss Princesses. So I'll see you in the next video, friends. Bye.